In this example, we're going to find the Maclaurin series for the sine function. And this is one of the most common examples that you'll see if you look up Taylor or Maclaurin series. It's an interesting one for a couple of reasons. Finding the pattern in the derivatives is relatively straightforward at first. The pattern is pretty clear. The tricky part is figuring out how to write that pattern concisely. So the pattern will be very clear early on, but the question will be how do we write that in a nice closed form like this formula we have here. So we're going to start as always with the function, in this case sine of x. We're going to plug in our center point. Since we're doing a Maclaurin series, the center is zero. And of course sine of zero is zero. And then we're going to take a few derivatives and see what happens. So the first derivative is cosine. The second derivative is the negative sine function. The third derivative will be negative cosine. And then the fourth derivative will be back to sine of x. So at that point, we can definitely stop because it's going to loop around repeatedly. So certainly by that point, we'll have seen a pattern emerge. If we plug in zero to all of these derivatives, we get one for the first derivative, zero for the second derivative, negative one for the third derivative, and back to zero for the fourth derivative. If we kept going, we would get one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, and that just loops over and over and over again. So again, the pattern is very clear. It's alternating from zero to positive one, zero to negative one, zero to positive one, zero to negative one. But the question is, how do we write that in a concise form? It turns out that what we're gonna do is write out the first few terms of this series, write out the polynomial, and we're gonna drop off all of the terms that are just zero. And once we do, we'll find a pattern in what's left over. So initially, we know that sine of x is going to equal that series, and I'll rewrite it here. So when k equals zero, we get the first value for our coefficient, which is zero, divided by zero factorial times x to the zero, which of course is just one. So that whole term goes to zero, but we'll keep it for now. When k equals one, we'll have the first derivative at zero, which is one, divided by one factorial times x to the one. Then the next term will have zero over two factorial times x to the two, and then plus negative one, so minus one over three factorial x to the third, plus zero over four factorial x to the fourth, plus one over five factorial x to the fifth, and so on. Now if we drop off the terms that are zero, what we get is one over one factorial x, minus one over three factorial x cubed, plus one over five factorial x to the fifth, and if we kept going, you can see the next one will be minus one over seven factorial x to the seventh, and then the same thing with nine, and so on. So if we look at this, notice that each of these terms has the same form. It's one over a factorial times x to a power, and the factorial and the power are the same value. And notice that we have one, three, five, seven, nine, so these are all the odd numbers in this pattern. And then also notice that we have an alternating positive negative pattern. So we're gonna put all this together into a compact formula, but we're gonna use the fact that we can write the odd numbers with a specific form. And I'll note here that the odd numbers fit the form 2k plus one, or you could write 2k minus one, or there's other variations of this, but the most common is 2k plus one. If k equals zero, you get one. If k equals one, you get three. If k equals two, you get five. And so it exactly fits what we have here. So we're gonna use that, and our formula will start with k equals zero. 
and each term is going to have that expression for the odd numbers in the denominator as a factorial, the one in the numerator, and then x raised to that same power. That's the pattern for all of them. And the only piece we haven't addressed yet is the alternating part. We know how to get that. A negative one to the k gives us that alternating part. And we just double check when k equals zero, this is positive one, this is one, and this is one, which gives us that first term. When k equals two, we get negative, and then three for the factorial and the power and it continues from there. So the tricky part with this sign example is not so much finding the pattern as it is clearing out all the zeros and then finding a compact way of writing down the form of the answer that remains. So that's sine of x and I will leave cosine of x for you to practice and see if you can get a similar one. Cosine of x works very similarly but there's a slight difference that you'll notice if you work that one out.